This week's video is a special guest vlog from The Plug Seeker. The Plug Seeker is a bit of a famous bloke, not only on Twitter, if you use Twitter you've definitely seen The Plug Seeker retweet something, but if you've ever used the Plug Share app, pretty much the whole of the UK, Ireland and pretty much quite a lot of Europe, especially France, was added by The Plug Seeker. He had, used to be number one across the whole board points ever. He's now number two. He, he basically added pretty much every locationable information, the numbers for the location, and then went along everywhere. For, uh, let's not explain too much of it. He's going to go into most of the, this, this in the blog. But I just wanted to say, you're probably not going to see me for a couple of weeks. I'm getting married on the 3rd of November, the week after this video is due to be released. And I'm going to have a break. I'm going to have a little bit of downtime from YouTube. I don't know how long that might be. It might be a couple of weeks. It might be two weeks. It might be a month. It might not be at all because I might get the YouTube bug and just have to make a video. So I hope you enjoy this guest vlog. And I'll see you in a couple of weeks when I'm back from being married. Good afternoon. This is The Plug Seeker. Uh, I'm doing a slightly different video today. And I'd like to thank Evie Nick for inviting me to do a guest v blog today on his channel and today i'm going to do a little bit of a chat about how i got into electric cars in the first place and how i got into plug share and to twitter and how eventually i started doing youtube like this so i hope you enjoy it how did i become the plug seeker well i've always had an interest in science even from a young age and uh, i think eco things were something i was interested in as well i was probably a recycler long before uh, it was commonplace but uh I would say my first few cars were definitely not very eco. And my first car was about 400 pound diesel polo ancient rust bucket. But then after university, Mazda MX-5. Now, this was fun, but again, not very eco. Well, the next thing that changed was by about 2008. And this came with the arrival of my uh, first boy. And at this point I needed an Isofix car seat in my car and it needed a nice, uh, convenient, comfy $5 hatchback. So with the arrival of kids, as uh, I'm sure everyone who can tell you has had kids, everything changes. And in instead would come my next car. And this was going to be a Volkswagen Polo, except this time a nice brand new Blue Motion Polo. At that time, the most eco cars around were the, the Polo Blue Motion diesels. Yeah, I know, diesels, we'll get back to that. The car at that time, which has been going really strong since the 1990s, was the Prius Hybrid. Uh, but in the end, I decided to go for the Blue Motion Polo. And I mean, all in all, it was a good car. Uh, it was a nice hatchback, but it wasn't as eco as we've been led to believe, was it? I would find that uh, all those years I'd been driving uh, supposedly eco, uh, maybe not. So the next step in my journey would be 2009. I got a job in London and I was commuting up almost every day. It gave me a lot of time on my hands because I was commuting a good hour and a half every day on the, uh, on the, on the train. What was I going to do with myself? Well, one of the things I started to do was look on YouTube. And of course, one of the channels I uh, stumbled on first, one by Rob Llewellyn. Uh, and I was intrigued to see what he was up to. Um, at this point, uh, Rob Llewellyn was doing a series called Carpool. Now, for those of you who have never watched this uh, show, I, I believe it was probably one of the first to use this format. What would happen was Robert would pick up people in his Prius Hybrid and he would take them wherever they wanted to go and do an interview en route. And the, this, this meant that uh, Rob Lone would be giving lists to famous celebrities, comedians, such as Jonathan Ross, and, as well as most of the cast from Red Dwarf as well. And at this time, uh, the Prius probably had been accepted as the epitome of what was an eco car for eco driving. And I think one of the real uh, turning points for me um, really here was that uh, uh, one April in 2009, Wellen was doing one of his uh, carpool episodes and he took um, comedian and television presenter Jonathan Ross out in an EV. And not just any EV, but an original Tesla Roadster. I have to say, this episode blew me away. At this point, I could clearly see that EVs, electrical cars, were the future. September 2010, it's a big red letter day for the EV world. This was the time we saw the arrival for the first time 
a nice family five door hatchback electric car mass produced at a price that most of us could probably afford. This was the first arrival of the Nissan Leaf. And uh, as luck would have it, Robert Llewellyn was at it again. In one of the early episodes, he does a review of the Nissan Leaf, which I saw and I was blown away. So once again, Robert Llewellyn was directing my journey as an electric car driver once again. I had to have one. It was no longer a question of if, it was just a question of when. However, in reality, it didn't work out quite as quick as that. We had our second kid, and again, those of you who've got kids know that that takes up a lot of your time and money and uh, energy. Now at this point, I was working in Sutton, and one of the next turning points in my journey was my workplace decided to install some electrical vehicle chargers, as you can see here. Uh, this was a uh, free pin plug and a Type 2. Um, and so that was it. I think the final uh, chips were falling into place. I was definitely getting a Nissan Leaf electric car. So we were now into 2014 and uh, after much number crumbing, I decided that, that I was going to sell my VW Blue Motion and use that as a deposit towards uh, a Nissan Leaf lease and started a lease at £230 a month for three years. In September 2013, a brand new white Vicia Leaf 24 kilowatt arrived at my doorstep and was there waiting for me when I got home from work. And I've never looked back. Uh, five years now later, uh, on my second Leaf, I still love that same experience and uh, I wouldn't trade it in for the world. Now, unfortunately, I was still a bit of a newbie when it came to electric vehicles and Possibly I hadn't researched the areas of different charging uh, types um, thoroughly enough. The, so the Nissan Vizia, which I leased, only came with a Type 1 charger. This was the very lowest entry level and did not have a Chadmo Rapid 50 kilowatt charger. The longest trips I tend to do would be to uh, Heathrow Airport, which I managed to do. Um, and left it on a destination charger while I was there. Uh, welcome to sunny Surrey. So I'd like to tell you in this uh, second part a little bit of how I got from being an electric car driver to being uh, heavily involved with multimedia, um, including uh, particularly Twitter and PlugShare. So as a techno gadget person and early adopter, I wanted to seek out and find as many electric car charging points as I could. So naturally I turned to my iPhone to try and find an app that would help me find chargers. I looked at various different uh, charging apps around, but eventually I settled on PlugShare, as this had the most worldwide chargers of any other app at the time, and had a really excellent user interface. The users were adding information uh, and updating. In that, ways, I, in that way, I thought it was very much like an early Wikipedia, and I really thought it had the potential to be something big. So I joined up uh, the PlugShare app, and. Uh, I had to put an avatar on um, as I joined the account and I thought well I'll keep it a little bit more anonymous and I just randomly googled around a few different images and then I just stuck on an image of Palpatine uh, the Emperor from Star Wars and I thought oh that, that looks quite cool it's got a sort of a, an electric theme going there with the electric bolts for lightning and that sort of thing so I thought yeah we'll put that on for now maybe we'll choose something else later and I logged on myself uh, as my username as being the UK plug seeker. Little did I know this would turn out later to be my, uh, my trademark uh, throughout all the social media platforms I would later go, go on to use. And I would also uh, send uh, private messages in PlugShare to um, other users to try and encourage them to uh, look around their local area and add charges and add photos. And as I was now updating um, locations outside of the UK, I changed my um, tag name on PlugShare, The Plug Seeker. I tend to have moved over the years now much more into using Twitter. And I kept the same avatar as I had on PlugShare. It seemed logical just to continue the same across platforms. And then in October 2017, I decided it might be useful to get a real Sith costume. And the plug seeker was made flesh for the first time. And I therefore partook 
in a photo bomb in front of Charge Master Headquarters. So from time to time, I will make my appearance as the real plug seeker. Once again, Nicholas, I would like to thank you for inviting me to your YouTube channel as an honored guest. Just a moment. Don't forget to subscribe to Nicholas's channel, but most importantly, don't forget to subscribe here to the Plug Seekers channel on Twitter and on YouTube. Thanks, Nick. You'll have to do a fair bit of editing there, uh, trying to find out. Uh... <laughs> so weird looking at the camera.